Hero Iris is with us in the interview area. Celeste Mom is here. Hi, you guys. Let's put our mics right up there. How are you guys doing? Good. Okay, you know what this is? This is a very special hour. First of all, it's very special because our hero is in the house. Let's have a little ringy dingy for that. Okay. Okay. And second of all, another reason is we have a Minnesota family, a large family, who is supporting Children's Miracle Network Hospitals this hour, and it is called a Triple Match Power Hour, Weezer Brothers. Thank you. And you know what I don't understand? Here's what I don't understand. The Weezer girls are always here, right on time. Where are the boys at? Oh, they'll be a little late. Oh, that's odd. Okay, we love you guys. Thank you for being part of things. We appreciate you. Right now they're on the phone bank and they're answering the phones. And guess what has happened? We haven't even asked for any pledges yet this hour since you've been in the house. We already have three. I think we've got a popular hero sitting here on the couch. <laughs> Celeste, can you take us back? Take us back to the beginning with Iris. Uh, Iris was born with um, hereditary spherocytosis. Can you say that again? With what? Hereditary spherocytosis. Um, basically, her red blood cells are um, spherocytes instead of a normal, you know, donut shaped. Um, and basically, her body just processes them out quicker. And um, it, her hemoglobin's a little low, and, and it's not a life threatening disease per se. Um, unless she gets an illness that knocks out her red blood cell production for a while. so, um, And we knew that from birth because her older sister has the same disease. Now, I know you're an educator, and I bet you have really received an education going through this because there's some medical terms that you just threw out there, and I was really trying <laughs> to understand what you were talking about. So you've really learned some new things, too. Absolutely. You've yeah. had to. Yeah, you have to. Yep. Okay, so now... Where are um, we at with she, she's pretty good in that aspect, but then when she was four, she was diagnosed with Crohn's, or not Crohn's disease, but ulcerated colitis, actually, at that time. And is then, it okay, Iris, if we talk about that a little bit? Is that okay? So what does that disease, what does that do to you? Um, basically, her colon just did not work properly, and okay. she wasn't processing her food properly, and it was just running right through her. Okay. So... So anxiety in the house, trying to figure out what to feed her. I mean, what what happened? Um, well, yeah, we tried diet. Um, we've tried medications. We've tried lots of different things. So um, was she thriving? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, she did okay until she hit about twelve. Okay. Thirteen. And then what happened? Um, then she could not, she wasn't gaining weight. She wasn't, yeah, she was not thriving at all. She was down to about 65 pounds, which is pretty scary to see. And, um, yeah, then, then we started doctoring with Dr. Uko and things got kind of serious then of what the future looked like. And what were they telling you? Um, basically we just need to get her to gain weight and she would eat and eat and eat and she, it would just go through her. She just could not gain weight. So, um, they put her on a feeding tube, um, which was an exciting time. <laughs> Where did, uh, you know, with the feeding tube? In she, a she started with a nasal one. Okay. So it went through her nose into her stomach. Um, and what, then what went through it? What did, what did you feed uh, her? Formula basically. Okay. You know. It's just a, like an adult formula, so right. giving her all the calories she needs to survive. And uh, then eventually, um, she kept throwing those up, <laughs> unfortunately. So then we went with a peg tube, which is one directly into the stomach. So you're worried. Your daughter is not thriving, not growing, not doing what she was supposed to do. Correct. Uh, a little yeah. bit of stress in your house. Oh, just a little bit. You were bit. running back and forth to the doctor? <laughs> um, yeah, we would come up once a month. Okay. Or uh, during this time, she started um, getting dehydrated frequently. And um, also about this time, her electrolytes were getting unbalanced. So, yeah, we were, we were coming back to the doctor quite frequently. So you're 16 right now. Let's pass the mic over here. Okay. Are you ready for this? Okay. You're 16 right now. Mm -hmm. Who drove you here today? I did. You did? <laughs> so you have your driver's permit now. Yep. Okay. So, um, you know, Mom and I have been talking about 
what's going on with you. How does that make you feel? Are you able to talk about with your friends and with people that ask what's going on with you? Yeah. Is it easier to talk to friends because it's because they care or does it make you feel weird talking about it? It depends. I don't know. I'm I usually don't care if they ask, but usually they don't ask. So if you're going out um, with your friends and you're going out to eat pizza or whatever you're going to do, can you eat like they eat now? Yeah, now I can. Now you can. Okay, because your tummy feels better and everything's working better. Mm -hmm. Do you remember um, the first time that uh, you had some help from Children's Miracle Network? I bet you remember your mom talking about it. Yeah, I remember my mom was thankful for like meal tickets when I was in the hospital. Because moms and dads have to take care of themselves too, don't mm -hmm. they? And sometimes moms and dads, they don't put themselves up here in one and two. They're down here somewhere. So that's really wonderful. Now what happened when your family got, did you get a phone call that said, you know what, we want Iris to be our hero. What happened? How did that start? I don't really know. One day my mom just asked me and said she got like a letter and asked me if I wanted to do it. Did you know what being a hero meant? At the time, no. <laughs> and now you do? Yeah. And you've been doing a lot of things. What has been your favorite event that you've done so far? Um, there was a classic car show that I did and got a hand out a trophy. That was my favorite so far. Where was the classic car show? It was at Home Depot in on Alaska. Nice. So what was your favorite car that was at the car show? It was a Mustang Shelby. A Mustang Shelby. And are you wishing that maybe that would be your first automobile when you get your driver's <laughs> license? Definitely. <laughs> Did you see that vein on your mom and said, "Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know about that one." Um, and then you got to go through the Oktoberfest Maple Leaf Parade. Mm -hmm. That's one long parade, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, um, the the float, mm -hmm. Olson Trucking, you know, donated. We had a bunch of fun drivers, didn't we? They were really good. They took good care of us. And Bruce Bauer from Bauer's in La Crescent, he made sure that we had some nice things to decorate the um, float with. You sat on one of the hay bales. Mm -hmm. You know what we thought we'd do next year? We think we're going to bring some stadium blankets to put on the hay bales so we don't have straw stuck to our, you know, the whole time. <laughs> yeah, because that was an issue. Yeah, but yeah. see, you learn as you go. Okay, so you're feeling good. Mm -hmm. Things are good. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. I want to pass the mic back to mom a minute. So was it easy or hard for you to accept the help from Children's Miracle Network? Um, both. <laughs> um, it's good to know that there's people out there that care and are willing to help you. Um, we're kind of in the mentality that we're self-sufficient and we don't need help. But once you say yes, you realize how um, important and how how good that is. You know, sometimes you don't know what help you need until after the fact. There is not a family that we have visited with in the last day and a half that said, yes, we jumped up and down, we wanted help. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, similar replies, there's somebody else that needs it more than we do, Correct. is what yeah. we've heard. So accepting the help sometimes is like a big challenge. It's a yeah. big challenge. But you know what? When you have volunteers and you have people on a foundation that follow your family, and I know that happened because one of the families earlier this morning said they even checked on us when we were down having surgery in Texas. That is a tightly knit community. And taking care of families, that's what it's all about, the Children's Miracle Network Hospital. That is what it's about. So what I think we'll do now, I think we'll get some action on the phone bank because I think we need to do some work with the Triple Match Power Hour that Weezer Brothers is so generously making sure happens. So... Okay, you read the phone numbers for me. Can you see the board over there? Okay, go ahead. Give them the phone number. 8008536889. And the one on top of it? 7811477. Okay, I've been replaced. I'll see you later. Okay, <laughs> see you at 3 o'clock. Okay, um, thank you guys so much for being here. Families, heroes, keep up the good work. You have a really good year coming up. I know you do. There's a lot of fun in store for you guys. But in turn, thank you for doing what you're doing because bringing awareness, you know what that is. That's what's making this happen. There goes the phones. There goes the phones. So we're not even going to put a number on it because I've lost track. You've had so many calls already come in. 
and um, we will continue to ask for the calls. You guys, thank you so much for making the trip. We enjoy talking to you. You're listening to... Should you want to close it for me, or you want me to do it? You can do it. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's a Children's Miracle Network Radiothon, a service of the Lacrosse Radio Group.